Consumer confidence for the first time since this recession began is back up above the benchmark level of, of 90. Um, it's an index number, so it's kind of 90 what? Not 90, that's what it is. But, um, but it, again, it's measuring uh, consumers' willingness to engage in big ticket purchases. Uh, and that's a sense about how comfortable they are that their job's gonna be there and their ability to pay off that or their ability to replace savings if they don't buy it on time. And um, we've seen it as low as 25, which is an all-time low during this recession, uh, back in, in 2008, um, excuse me, 2009. Uh, and it's really struggled. It, it kind of got back up in the 60s and 70s, and it just kind of struggled along there for the last couple of years. And it's only been uh, in the last couple of months that we've seen it push back up, again, up above 90. And so in August, it's sitting at 92.4, and that's, that's pretty good. And, and that's, what that tells you is consumers are ready to participate in the economy again. Um, if we get a little bit of wage increase going their way, uh, they'll probably you know, basically dive in and start consuming at higher rates than they have been. And that'll ultimately be healthy for the economy. But the one downside, as I've said, we've been in this recovery for 63 months, a little over five years. Um, sixth longest recovery of the 33 uh, expansions that, uh, since 1854. So it's, it's been a long expansion period. The problem we've got now is that if we start to see too much growth at this, at this deep point into this expansion, the Fed will start to try to pull it back by raising interest rates because they can't keep them at, at as low as they are, zero to 25 basis points. They can't keep them there indefinitely. And so the first signs they see of uh, increase in consumer spending and or an increase in inflation or just staying at that 4% rate, they're going to start to draw back 